Hey YouTube, we're Christians and we have five questions for atheists. Hopefully this will help us better understand where you guys are coming from. Okay, I hope your goal really is to understand. I, more often than not, when Christian types start asking these questions, they're usually gotcha questions, and they're usually not prepared to understand or accept the answers themselves. But I'm going to try taking you guys at your word and answer as honestly as I can. Alright, hit me. Alright, let's get right to it. The first question is fairly common, but the answers are always interesting. Question one. What kind of evidence would it take for you to believe in God? Not what would be a good start, but what evidence would actually convince you. And when we say God, we're talking about a mind which is all-loving, all-powerful, meaning he can do everything but the logically contradictory, all-knowing, and eternal. The truth is I'm not sure that I can believe in the God that you've described. I'd be much more likely to believe in, say, the Egyptian, Norse, or Greek, Roman, whatever type gods, because those gods don't have to be eternal. They don't, they don't have to be all-loving or all-powerful or all-knowing or any of those things. I mean, oftentimes they're killed, they're born, they're a lot like humans, they're a lot like other life forms, but, you know, they're, they, they just happen to be really, really powerful beings. And when you say God is a mind, well, what does that even mean? As far as I'm concerned, the mind is a product of the brain. It's, it's the bit of us that, that thinks or that experiences or feels. It's, it's that, uh, that which is us. And it's generated by, like I said, the physical structure of our brain. So what generates the mind that is God? Where is that? It doesn't make sense to me. Now, you ask what evidence would convince me. Now, like I say, I would have a difficult time believing in your God because it's very nebulously defined. I, I don't even really know what it is that you are defining. It, it sounds like you could be describing a ghost. It sounds like you could be describing, I don't know, uh, some sort of shade or, or extra dimensional being. I mean, you don't really describe anything that I can you know, really get my hooks into, you know, so I could say what criteria would be required for me to believe in this stuff. But I can tell you what would help is if you remove the requirement of faith, if faith were not an issue, if we had empirical objective evidence, the same kind of evidence that would convince a scientist of something, then I'd believe in your God. It is mainly the requirement of faith that makes me not believe. And that's the bottom line. I can't be any more specific than that, because unfortunately you weren't very specific about what your God actually is. Question two. Is there anything that I can do that could possibly convince you that God exists? Like, would any argument we could make have the potential to persuade you? Nope. There is no argument that you can make that will make me believe in God. However, you can present to me evidence objective, empirical, material evidence. That will convince me that there's a God. But an argument isn't going to do it. You can't convince me with nothing more than words. It's not going to happen. I mean, suppose someone were to tell me that there is a cat inside of a box, and I take their word for it. Well, isn't that stupid? Shouldn't I check? Shouldn't I listen to see if, you know, there's purring inside the box or meowing or some scratching in there? Shouldn't I check to make sure that the cat doesn't need food or a litter box or something? I mean, come on, think about it. Would you just believe somebody when they told you that the cat was in there? Or would you check? So why should I not check to make sure that your God is actually there? Why should I take it on faith? Why should I take an argument for it? I'm not about to. You're going to have to present actual evidence. You're going to have to show it to me, not just tell me. That's the bottom line. I mean, think of it this way. Would you buy a car you hadn't test driven? I wouldn't. W would you, I don't know, get married to someone you'd never slept with? How do you know you're compatible? How do you know you haven't just made a horrible life decision that'll last for a very long time and be very inconvenient to try and annul when you haven't even checked out the merchandise, essentially? Why would you do that to yourself? So why would I believe in a God that someone had only told me existed? 
No, there is no argument that you can make that will make me believe in God. You're just going to have to show the fucker to me. Question three. If you realized that an all-loving God existed, would you desire to have a relationship with him? If you said yes to that question, would you want to have a relationship with him just to get into heaven or for some other reason? Well, I don't think that God exists. The God you've described, I don't think that God exists. I mean, I look around at the misery in this world and I say to myself, all loving? Really? I don't buy that for a second. I think if the God that you described really existed, if there really was an all loving God, this world would be a very different place. But let's assume for a moment that this world can be the way it is and there can be an all-loving God. Let's just assume that for a moment. Would I be in support of this God and would I do so just to get into heaven? Well, probably yes on both scores, I guess. I mean, well, no, I wouldn't be doing it just to get into heaven. But then again, I would have to agree with what this God wants, with what this God is doing. I mean... Given some of the shit that happens in the Bible, uh, the way God declares certain people to be persona non grata and says, you know, kill them, kill them all, and, you know, burn them in fire and all this crap, it doesn't sound like an all-loving God to me. And I'm not sure I could support that God, even if it would, you know, condemn me or whatever. Because how is that all-loving? I don't get it. Uh, the God you're describing doesn't match the God that's in scripture, or the God I've been hearing about, or this world. So I'm having a very difficult time answering this question because, well, you not only would the world be a different place, but the deity that is described in your holy text would be a different kind of God. If he was all loving, I mean. So I'm having a hard time answering this question. I'm sorry. Question four. Have you ever met a Christian who lives their life in such a way that it is clear that they really believe in an all-loving God? Meaning they live a life which is impressively kind, loving, and selfless. See, again with these postscripts, I mean, if you just, if all you'd ask me was whether or not I'd met someone who behaved as if they truly believed in a God, or even truly believed in an all-loving God, I could say yes, I have definitely met those people, but then you go and throw this monkey wrench into the work saying that this person, not just the God, but the person, has to be all loving and selfless and all this other crap. And have I ever met anyone like that? No. Never. Not once. Not ever. It's never happened. It really hasn't. And so, again, I, you know, I have a hard time answering your questions as asked, but then again, I guess I really did give you an answer on this one, but still, the answer's got to be no. I've never met anyone like that. And question five. Has the presence or lack of that type of Christian had any impact on your atheism? Well, as I say, I've never met anyone like that, so that hasn't had an impact on my life. Has the lack had an impact on my life? Well, how am I supposed to answer that? I mean, I suppose if I had hit hard times and there was no one there who could selflessly give me whatever it was I needed to get back on my feet, I suppose that could have an impact. But, again, I'm not sure such people actually exist. So, you know, their lack is like having a lack of purple dragons wearing raincoats in my life, you know? It's like big, fat, hairy deal. So... No, none of this has had an effect on my atheism. The single solitary thing that could ever have an effect on my atheism is evidence. That's it. That's the only way that my atheism will change, either, you know, to get stronger or weaker, is if someone presents me with evidence. That's it. You know, prove it, rather than forcing me to have faith. That's the only way you're changing my atheism. That's it. Feel free to make a video response and answer some or all of these questions. And I'm only leaving this bit in because sometimes YouTube can get really cranky about the whole revenue sharing partnership thing when I'm using someone else's footage. But you guys asked for a video response and you got one. So, until next time, don't run on automatic. Please. Think. Bionic Dance, out.